Digital information is transmitted in an encrypted form using a shared symmetric key. But sharing a key is a challenge when eavesdroppers are lurking. But what if there's a way of transmitting a key without actually sharing it? So what I mean by that is what if there could be somehow synthesize a key separately that could be guaranteed to come out identical? Well, it sounds impossible, but can be done via Daffy Hellman key exchange. And today's session is all about explaining this key exchange process. Now, before I tell you about this algorithm, let me show you some of the most prevalent problems in cryptography today, which is the exchanging of keys between the two communicating parties. Now, the goal here is not just to exchange keys, but to do it in such a way that anyone who's listening to the communication between the devices should not get a hold of the key. Okay, so let's look at the problem. Now, suppose Sam and Tom wish to exchange the key before they start communicating. Now, if you notice in the scenario here, if the intruder somehow got access to the communicational channel and is listening to Sam and Tom's conversation and intercepting the keys being sent. So basically, if an intruder can intercept the key, then encrypting the data with that key is basically pointless. So how do we approach to solving this problem? So one of the solutions to key exchange was proposed by Whitfield Diffie and Martin E. Hellman. So let's understand this with a simple scenario. The process begins with two parties. Let's call them Tom and Sam. They both agree upon an arbitrary starting color key that does not need to be kept secret, but should be different every time. Now in this example, the color is yellow. Now considering that Eve here is also listening to the conversation and hence knows the color of the key. So next Tom and Sam each select the color key that they keep to themselves, in this case, orange and blue green. Now the crucial part of the process is that Sam and Tom each mix their own secret color key together with their mutually shared colored key, resulting in orange tan and light blue mixtures here respectively, and then publicly exchange the two mixed colors key. Now, finally, each of the two mixed colored keys are received from the partner with their own private keys. The result is a final colored key mixture, in this case, yellow brown, that is identical to the partner's final colored mixture. Now, if a third party listens to the exchange, it would be computationally difficult for this party to determine the secret colors. In fact, when using large numbers rather than colors, this action is computationally expensive for modern supercomputers to do in a reasonable amount of time. So far, we are able to agree upon a common colored key securely. Now, this is an easy way to understand the working of Defi Hellman key exchange algorithm. Now, let me actually tell you guys what exactly is Defi Hellman. So, Defi Hellman key exchange is also called exponential key exchange and is a method of digital encryption that uses numbers raised to specific powers to produce decryption keys on the basis of components that are never directly transmitted, making the task of a would be code breaker mathematically overwhelming. So basically, the Defi Hellman key exchange method allows parties that have no prior knowledge of each other to jointly establish a shared secret key over an insecure channel. This key can be used to encrypt subsequent communications using a symmetric key cipher. It is one of the most important key exchange algorithms, which is widely used to secure a variety of Internet services. Although Defi Hellman key agreement itself is a non authenticated key agreement protocol, it provides the basis of a variety of authenticated protocols and is used to provide forward secrecy in transport layer security ephemeral modes referred to as EDH or DHE, depending on the cipher suit. The method was followed shortly afterwards by RSA and implementation of public key cryptography using asymmetric algorithms. All right, so that was a brief about Defi Hellman, and I hope you guys have followed so far because I think it's been an easy ride and I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. But you must be knowing that cryptography needs numbers. So our next segment is all about cryptography and numbers, and I'm assuming that you're comfortable with modular arithmetic. All right, so let's get started. So the simplest and the original implementation of the protocol uses multiplicative groups of integers called modulo. Now the foremost step is to assume a prime number, so let's call it Q. Now, after assuming a prime number, we have to select alpha such that alpha must be the primitive root of the chosen prime number and alpha should always be less than Q. So two conditions has to be satisfied. So now what exactly does it mean to be a primitive root and how do we exactly find this? So alpha is considered to be a primitive root of Q if the following series is actually followed. So as you guys can see on the screen, the series is that alpha mod Q following which is alpha square mod Q following which is alpha cube mod Q until alpha raised to Q minus one modded by Q. So all this should actually give you a result of one, two, three till Q minus one. So if this condition satisfies, we call this alpha a primitive root of Q. Now after selecting alpha, the next step is to find the private and public keys of the sender and receiver. So the first step is to actually assume private key of user A. 
Now, while assuming the private key, we have to make sure that it's less than Q. And then we go on ahead to calculate the public key of user A, which is denoted by Y A out here and is given by this formula. So to calculate the public key, we use the formula, which is alpha raised to the private key of the user modded by Q. Similarly, we also do this following step for user B. So for user B, we again have to assume the private key and the private key also out here has to be less than Q. Now we go ahead and calculate the public key of user B, which is given by YB, which is equals to alpha raised to the private key of the user B modded by Q. So after following these steps, what user A has is his public and private key and what user B has is his public and private key. So after this, the only step that remains is key generation. So now it's time to generate the keys. Now the keys are generated at both the senders and receivers side. So let's look at the information that is available on the sender side. So the sender has won his private key and sender B's public key, which is easily available on the network and the prime number Q that we have selected. So basically his key is generated with the following formula, which is K that is the key, which is YB, which is the public key of sender B raised to the private key of sender A modded by Q. Similarly, on B side, we have X is private key, Y is public key, and the prime number Q. So for this, the key is generated by YA, which is the public key raised to the private key of B and modded by Q. So after we've calculated the key on both sides, all we have to make sure is both the keys are actually same and equal. Okay, so that was all about the theoretical aspect and the formulas and stuff. Now it's time we actually practically use this method and try to generate our keys ourselves. So since I can't be using an actual notepad, I'm going to be doing this on board. So in symmetric key encryption, whatever the key we are using at the encryption side, we also have to use the same key on the decryption side. So we are not actually exchanging the keys out here. We're just generating keys at both ends. That is the sender and receiver. Now let's discuss the problem. So consider a prime number. So first of all, let's say the prime number Q is equals to 11. Okay, so now that we've actually selected our prime number Q to be 11, it's time we actually find the primitive root. So to find the primitive root, we are going to use this table that I've created out here. So the rows are actually the numbers that are going to be raised and the columns are the indices. So one raised to one will give us one. So what we're going to do out here is we are going to use this formula. So our formula is a raised to x mod q. So a out here denotes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and x is from one till 10. So as you guys remember, x can only be till p minus one or rather q minus one since q is 11. So we are going to go up till 10. So the first formula will look something like one raised to one mod 11. So one raised to one is the first bracket and this whole thing is modded with 11. And then this just keeps changing to two, then it becomes three, then it becomes four and up till 10. Now, when you raise one with one, all this is going to be one. But when we come to two, something interesting happens. So two raised to one mod 11 is two. Now two raised to two mod 11 is four, mod three is eight, and two raised to four mod 11 is five. Then two raised to five mod 11 is 10. Then two raised to six is nine, then it's seven, then it's three, then it's six, and then it's one. So as you guys can see, our condition is actually being fulfilled by two. So the condition was that all the numbers from this formula's result will be actually lesser than Q. And indeed, everything is lesser than 11 out here. So what we conclude from this is that alpha or A can be two. That is two is a primitive root of 11. Okay, so now that we have the prime number and its primitive root, so it's time we actually calculate the public and private key for A and B both. So the first step is to actually assume the secret key of A. So let's assume secret key to be equals to eight. So if you assume it to be eight, our public key is actually given by two raised to eight and the whole thing mod 11. So that comes out to be three. So what do we have from here is that the private key is eight and the public key is three. Now it's time for B. So we also have to assume the private key for B. So the private key is going to be four. Now, according to the formula again, 
the public key will be given by 2 raised to 4 modulus 11. So that comes out to be 5. So from this, we come to know that B's private key is 4 and B's public key is 5, according to the formula. So now that we have both the public keys and private keys of A and B both, it's time we generate the keys. So for generating the key, the formula is, well, it's public key of B, which is 5 and raised to the private key of A, which is 8. And the whole thing has to be mod by 11. So the key generation will be given by 5 raised to 8 mod 11. So 5 raised to 8 is 390,625. So when you mod that by 11, you get 4. Now, we also have to do the same thing with B's information. So that is the public key of A, that is 3, 3 raised to 4, and mod 11. So 3 raised to 4 is 81, and 81 divided by 11 gives, so 77, 81 minus 77 is 4. So as we just proved that k is equals to k, which is 4 is equals to 4, so we have successfully generated the defi hellman key for these two users. Okay guys, so that was it for me about defi hellman key generation and exchange. I hope you guys learned something valuable today. That's it. Goodbye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!